We're now joined in studio live by the new Washington head boys basketball coach, Ryan Miller. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on and joining us. And uh, this process for you has been, I think, about a month long from what I've kind of seen from the school board. Uh, and then Monday night, it came to fruition as you uh, step up from the middle school to the high school ranks. Yes, uh, roughly, probably close to a month since I interviewed. And then um, the school board process, of course, spring break was in there, so it delayed it a little bit. But uh, Monday night, it was official, probably right around 6.45, 7 o'clock. And, and Coach, go ahead. So you go. I was going to probably ask something. Let me <laughs> okay. see the mouse, though. Um, and coach, you know, you go from uh, being the middle school coach at Wildwood to now the head coach at Washington. Uh, what do you think the transition will be like from uh, middle school to uh, varsity? Uh, it's obviously a big jump, but and I talked about this the other night a little bit. But it's something coaching basketball is coaching basketball. Uh, we tried to do the, a lot of stuff at Wildwood, like a high school program, um, kind of like a small college program. You know, we. Uh, we did scouting reports. We scouted people. You know, not all the coaches at that level do it, but it's the only way I know how to do it, and that's how I was taught. So uh, we'll we'll bring that to the high school level, and uh, we'll just expand it a little bit. Have more coaches that can get out, and uh, you know, filling that staff out with people that are experienced. And uh, so I, I just think it, it's again, coaching basketball is coaching basketball. We did a lot of nice things at Wildwood, and just you know, got to work a little harder, be a little bit more busy, but it, it'll translate. Just uh, talk to us about the entire process of your hiring and uh, what led to your decision of uh, pursuing this opportunity and making the jump. Yeah, well, um, we felt, like I said, we had a lot of success at Wildwood, and I love that school. Um, I'll still be involved there, and, you know, whoever the new head coach is, I'll offer them whatever they need as far as help. Um, and uh, But about halfway through this year, it got to a point where I knew I was ready to move on. And, you know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, you have this winning streak at Wildwood, why are you leaving? And I'm a guy that likes to feel challenged. So when it stopped becoming so challenging for me and I didn't feel like I had to maybe do the things that I needed to and on a nightly basis, um, I knew it was time to move on. And um, again, it, not that I stopped having fun. I, winning is always fun. But uh, it, it was one of those things where I wanted to be more challenged and I wanted to go a little bit farther. And then when I found out that Washington was opening up, it was a chance for me to just fulfill a dream. When I started in 2013 at Spring Mills High School, when it opened, um, I was a young guy, I was only 22 years old, and immediately knew that one day I wanted to do this. So uh, when uh, when I was ready to leave Wildwood and Washington opened up and it all kind of met, uh, timing-wise, uh, I knew it was the right fit. Let's talk about your coaching background a little bit and kind of maybe where you came from. I know I saw on Facebook the other night that you're getting congratulated by uh, your former high school head coach, Kelly Church, and yeah. uh, in that, you know, historic Hedgesville basketball program, uh, we had him on the show earlier this year when they reached their 500th, what was it, 500th win? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Which just... 25 years. Yeah, yes. just the amount of kind of what his coaching tree has kind of evolved to, and now you're one of those guys, essentially. Yeah, um, he's been awesome through the whole process, talking to him down at the state tournament when rumors were kind of flying, and uh, he he was great and uh, offered me his advice on things. Um, so that was really good. And uh, but that's kind of where I learned how to, the, my style, right? And uh, not necessarily on the floor, but just how to do things off the floor. Um, I was a guy when I played for him that was never the most physically gifted um, I could hold my own, but really I had to dive into film and, you know, be an extension of the coaching staff on the floor and be cerebral. And that allowed me to guard people that I probably had no business guarding and playing games that I had no business playing in. And uh, so that all translates to the coaching level and just seeing how they do things there, um, being able to take some of that and then put my own spin on it. Uh, I, I think it's been really good for me as a coach. And one of your assistant coaches coming from Hedgesville, is that correct? Yeah, well, I actually have two guys coming. Um, Kyle Van Meter uh, for the JV coach last year and has been for the last three years at Hedgesville. I think he's been there a total of five. Um, he's going to come over with me. Kyle's one of my best friends. And uh, when I told him that I was making this jump to Washington, he immediately said, well, let's do this. And it's always more fun to do things with your friends, right? Yeah. So uh, that's going to be a really cool dynamic. And I'm also bringing Zane Kogan over. Uh, he was a first-year guy on the Hedgesville staff because he just got done playing at Shepard. Zane's actually somebody that I coached when I was at Spring Mills. He came in as a freshman on that 2013 when it opened. And um, Zane just offers his youth, first off, he's got a lot of energy. And just from playing at a college level, sees things at a different level than a lot of people do. Um, so those guys will be really two really good additions for us. When you look at your uh, current team at Washington, and I'm sure you've seen them play a little bit, having been a middle school coach at Jefferson uh, and 
you know, either watching varsity games at Jefferson or just seeing them play at the middle school level as well. Uh, what do you think about the current roster that's there? And I know they have a young team, so how do you try to get the best out of those guys coming back? And uh, I guess where do you want to see some improvements for Washington to get them you know, toward the level where we've seen pretty much every other team in the EPAC be pretty competitive, but they've been kind of toward the bottom every year. Right. Uh, I mean, they do have a lot of young talent there. That's one thing I'm really excited about. You know, you had a freshman last year that was second team all EPAC and Chris Dolman. Um, you return a lot of guys who had a, you know, played significant minutes at the varsity level, and you don't always get that. You see some teams lose four or five seniors who played significant minutes. I think lost, like Washington lost a few, um, but they bring the big kid back, George Welty. Uh, who I'm really excited about. He's a big physical kid. I can't wait to get in the gym with him. Um, Malik Smith comes back and really shoot the ball off that team. Um, and obviously, you know, it, a lot of it centers around Chris, and he gets a lot of the attention. And um, on the floor, Chris is going to be fine. Uh, off the floor, I really need him to step up as a leader, as a sophomore. And I know, uh, and in talking to him a little bit, it's going to be uh, tough for him because he, he he's the kid. He's quiet, right? And uh, as a sophomore, you don't always want to take a you know take a stand and, and be the leader. But I need him to be. And um, so I'm I'm really excited about the roster. Like I said, they returned a lot of talent. Um, we're gonna have some talent coming. And uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. You mentioned uh, the first question I asked you was you were looking for a challenge, and some would say that one of the biggest challenges, if not the biggest challenge, at least for boys basketball in the impact, is becoming the head coach for Washington and. A program that, as Nick just said as well, kind of has been at the bottom of all the teams. And not only have we seen that for boys basketball, we've seen some coaching changes throughout the entire school of Washington. And that has caused, uh, it seems like, some kids to maybe not want to pursue athletics there because they don't know who their coach is going to be year in, year out. But for you, being up for this challenge, hopefully, and wanting to build this foundation, what are you hoping to do and what goals are you starting early on that you want to achieve yeah so the first thing is just consistency um i plan to be at washington for a long time and they haven't always had that and even when i well, washington became a high school when i was playing in high school and um had don bullet for the first couple of years and then has been a rotating door kind of since then um but i'm going to provide that consistency and then really all i'm looking for is progress um, I don't expect this to happen overnight. Um, you know, you're talking about a team that was three and 18 last year. I'm not going to flip that, and we're not going to go 18 and three. I, I'm not naive to that. We we play a, a tough schedule, especially in the EPAC, where everybody can beat anybody on a given night. Um, but really, it's it's just about progress for me. And uh, it's not. I don't like putting a number wins and losses on the things. If we're competing on a nightly basis, that's that's going to be good enough for me. When you kind of you know do a deeper dive into a program, at some point. Whether these, it's you know a legendary coach, uh, you know being there at some point. But I feel like what I've learned, uh, you know, I've only been here in the Martinsburg area for about you know coming up on two years, and it seems like at some point or another, these successful programs, their coaches or their assistant coaches are ingrained in that school uh, with being with teaching there or you know being something there. Is that are you planning to move over to Washington or have anybody there? Yeah. So um, that's just kind of been in the works and it's not board approved yet but i accepted a job over there um i believe kyle van meters applied as well um so we'll have two guys in the building and i think that's really key seeing the kids every day building a rapport with them um being there if there's any issues you know as far as scheduling and and just being seen in the hallways goes a long way with it building a relationship with the kids and i do think it's really important it's part of the reason again i love wildwood i never thought a year ago that i would be leaving um but this is an opportunity to do something, and, and one thing about me is when I do things, I dive all the way into them and uh, kind of one-track mind. And so when I knew that I was going to take the coaching job there, it was really important to me to get a teaching job there as well. And when you look at the Jefferson program now, and you've been a big part of the varsity success because middle school obviously leads into the varsity program, um, but it wasn't always that Jefferson – I mean, they've had good teams in the past, but really they have – taking a step now that they are the dominant team in the EPAC. How do you then, I guess, from a varsity head coach perspective, uh, I guess, get the growth at Washington to kind of go on the same path and, you know, see your middle school team have success to lead to the JV and then to the varsity? Yeah, so um, I think the first thing is just 
getting that line of communication with the middle school coaches open. Um, Coach Jason Smith at Charlestown, Ryan Milborn at Harpers Ferry, they both feed us. Uh, so one of my priorities is to sit down with them, um, start talking about, you know, if they can run a little bit of our stuff, use same terminology, just be seen in the building. Uh, I think stopping by their games and practices is important, getting kids to buy into the program. Um, but I think learning in, you know, in Jefferson County, you can play as a sixth grader on the varsity team. So. Uh, it, it's nice to be able to get your hands on those kids early and teach them, you know, what it's going to be like. With Charlestown pretty much being a direct feeder to Washington and, and Harpers Ferry being mostly to Washington, uh, if we can, we can kind of do what we want to do in those programs and get the coaches on board, I, I think it'll go a long way. Just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Were you someone that always wanted to go into coaching when you were younger or did that come later on in life? So looking back, I think so. Um, if you would have told me when I was graduating high school that I was going to be a coach, I would have never thought so. Um, and then, But looking back and how it was, you know, I kind of, I was a point guard and again, wasn't the most athletic, wasn't the most physically gifted guy. So I kind of had to be that coach on the floor and see things at a different level and be a couple plays ahead. So uh, I think that's all translated. Um, when I got a phone call from Joel Silver when he was the head coach at Spring Mills, uh, really I was coming on to just be a practice player because I was still young enough to run up and down with the guys and, you know, was still playing all the time. And very quickly I realized that this is what I wanted to do. So I just kept taking on a bigger and bigger role. And um, so I would say that's when I really realized that I wanted to do this. Um, and then it really became a part of me whenever I left Spring Mills and took the job down at Wildwood and got that program. Uh, and I've been able to run that program uh, for the last seven years and, and really to credit to the people at Wildwood, they've let me do it my way. And, and not a lot of middle schools uh, are behind their athletics like they are at Wildwood. And, and I'll say, like, we, we traveled. Like, we went to Morgantown and Bridgeport the last couple of years and played there. We had people down. We've held a mix of the last two years. And it, it's been a great experience. And it's kind of shown me what I wanted to do at the varsity level and even take it a step farther. I have a kind of a, an outlook question. We kind of talked about it a little bit off the air. I mentioned it to you. Uh, what kind of, it's kind of hard to anticipate what's going to happen here with that, that bill that's, that allows transfers. How do you as a, as a brand new head coach kind of take a look at that and what do you take from that to maybe go, well, I got to make sure I got to keep these guys here if they want to be in my program or, you know, accept new guys that come in? Yeah, so a lot of it's about buy-in um, for the guys that are there. You know, you have to make them feel like they're a part of something and, and something they want to be a part of. And um, I, I'll be honest, like, not everybody's a fit everywhere. You see it in college all the time now. Some programs just aren't a fit for kids. So what it's going to do is it's going to give those kids an opportunity to go elsewhere. Um, so really it's about making your program and doing the best job that you can and making it attractive. Um, but not, again, we're, as coaches, we're still not allowed to go out and recruit and do all this. Yeah. But um, you can do little things and people can see stuff from the outside. Um, so I, th I think you just got to do a good job running your program the best way you know how. And uh, that's what we're going to try to do at Washington and do the little things and really run it like a small college and make it, you know, good for the players that are there and attractive for people that want to come. So what's next for you and your uh team as you get ready for next season so a uh, parent meeting because again this all happened fast you know monday just got approved and really was allowed to do stuff so parent meeting tomorrow night uh, get them the schedule for the summer and i think that might be a little surprising because it's going to be busy um so we're going to go to a couple team camps and then we're going to go to mount st mary's and play in their team camp and um, we're trying to get into another one at the end of the three-week coaching period that we have um the weight room is going to be big for us especially with such a young team so uh, I'm excited about that. And then um, really just getting my hands on the guys, letting them learn uh, how we do things and we're going to do things at Washington. And it's going to be an adjustment period. But um, I think the sooner that we can get in the gym and, and start doing things, really use a lot of flex days this year uh, early on, I think it'll help us out. Coach Ryan Miller, our guest, thanks for the time. We uh, look forward to talking, you, uh, talking to you here soon in the summer, probably a, a little bit as well. Thank you guys for having me. appreciate it.